the what I am advocating is thoroughly, thoroughly refused. I'm not saying it's wrong, but I prefer this way of explaining, which is based on the Munatika and the Lady Seattle's explanations. They don't go into this explanation, but this is how I would like to explain Titi. But I haven't given the commentarial explanation because this hand, these handouts were made in in some type of uh, in a because within one week or within few days. So there was limited time to give all the references. So I also want to emphasize that this Titi that I'm going to explain, you will listen it, hear it, learn it different ways by different teachers. So please be aware that there are two ways of explaining Titi in Theravada tradition and one is accepted by the mainstream of the tradition and this also is advocated by certain teachers. So here what I am saying is Upada Titi Banga. So I would draw the diagram now in a, this man. A reality suddenly arises which was not there, suddenly arises. Before, I was, I always used to draw it like this. So, I will come to this diagram at the end of this lesson, but here, now I'm saying, a reality which didn't exist, suddenly appeared. This reality exists and suddenly disappeared. Disappear means, from here, it is no more. So, this is the time, if you know the timeline, the reality existed and disappear. So this is the moment of arising, coming into existence from non-existence. Then, after disappearing from existence to non-existence. Existence to non-existence to existence, existence to non-existence. Right? So this is, during this short time, we call reality is existing. So leaving apart the phase for arising, for this, for example, this moment of arising. Arising means coming from non-existent to existent. And then the last moment of existent to non-existent. The vanishing, the last moment of vanishing. During this time, the rupa, the reality exists. Titi means this phrase, the entire time which the rupa exists immediately after the arising and till the moment immediately before passing away is called the Titi. So this term was explained by past teachers as Attita Sabba Dhammanam Titi Namu Pauchat. If you go to the handout, you will find a phrase in Pali. Attita Sabba Dhammanam Titi Namu Pauchat. Titi means the existing nature of conditioned realities existing nature of conditioned realities. So, after it has come into arisen, it exists and it goes into passing away. So, this is an, one way of explaining it. <laughs> so, uh, now, Buddha mentioned, also mentioned in, a, in the Sankata Lakkana Sutta <clears throat> that, uh, also, uh, before that I will come to another type of existing titi. There is another titi called Pabhanda titi. You can see it in the uh, in the same handout, same page, uh, eight point two, nine point eight point two. Pabhanda titi. Pabhanda titi is a concept. It means the existence of a generation of nama and rupa. The titi which I am talking is called kana titi. Kana titi means momentary existence. The momentary existence. Kana titi. So. This existence, like from the moment it arises till, uh, uh, till the, after the moment it passes, uh, till the moment it passes away, is called titi. So now, if we take the abandoned titi, means now these are the momentary realities. For example, they are separate realities. These separate realities exist continuously, one after another. For example, someone enters into the jhana. This is the doctrine, we find the jhana, existence of jhana is considered as a pabanda titi. Because as long as you are in the jhana, if the, uh, the bhavanga chitta will not interrupt your attainment. The jhana chitta is going to happen continuously for a longer time. So the entire series of the jhana chittas, it exists, that this series exists, existence of a generation, sustaining of a generation. 
is called pabanda titi. It is called a santati ganam. <coughs> santati ganam means we can take a generation of nama rupa as one and we can say it exists, it remains. This is not an ultimate, rea ultimate quality, ultimate reality. It is just a continuation of nama and rupa. So this titi, the kana titi, is the momentary persisting of uh, a reality which has arisen from the moment of its arising till the moment it passes away. So when you go to the Lakhana Sutta, uh, Sankata Lakhana Sutta, the Buddha has given, he mentioned there are three characteristics of all conditioned realities. Three characteristics of all conditioned realities. Upado Panyayati, Vayo Panyayati, Titasya Panyatatta Panyayati. If you go to the next page, you find I have given the uh, <coughs> Sorry, we go to page number 10. <coughs> page number 10, 9.12. Last page. Sankata Lakkana Sutta. Tini Mani Bikkave Sankata Sankata Lakkana. Monks, there are three characteristics of conditioned reality. Uppado Panyayati. Uh, rising has can be seen. Vayo Panyayati. Passing away can be seen. Titas Anyatattam Panyayati. Uh, alternation can be observed what, during is first uh, phrase of persisting last page 9.12 paragraph 9.12 paragraph so three characteristics upada vaya and titasa anyatatta anyatatta means alternation so how do we understand titha titha is similar to titi it's just a verbal it's, it's a noun titi titha titha means the reality which persists exists Titi means this existence or persisting or nature state. So alternation can be seen. So how do we understand this? There is a literal argument about this. Some teachers used to say, Buddha mentioned rising is seen, passing away is seen, there is an alternation between while it is existing. So they some used to say he was referring to the generation, generation of realities not a momentary reality. The argument they bring was the formula it was given. If it was, he was referring to the momentary existence, this is for your academic uh, uh, information. If it was given for the momentary kana reality, kanika reality, he would have uttered upado panyayati, titasa anyatattam panyayati, vayo panyayati. So instead of giving it in the sequence it happens, Instead of giving in the real sequence, it happens. Why the Buddha has given Upada, Vaya, and Titasa Anyatata? Because he feels about rising, passing away, which are qualities of the realities, and then Titasa Anyatata means why it exists as generations, you can see they change. For example, our Rupas, during its a generation, it happens newly, passes away. During this period, you can see how it changes. So, that is a one way of explaining. But some teachers say, no, this is uh, regarding a momentary existence. So, there are two opinions on this point. Titasa Anyatatta. So, I will go to explain this Titasa Anyatatta in this manner. Titasa Anyatatta means, Anyatatta means alternation. This refers to Jara. It's another phenomenon, which is called Jara. Jara is aging. I have given a very brief explanation of Jara. The Jara is a very huge topic. It is a phenomenon. Sometimes this Jara, I'll come to because I'll be explaining Titi, Jara and all together. That's why I'm moving from topic to topic. Don't worry about that. Titi and Jara both are going to be explained. So I think you got an idea about Titi. Jara means the aging. What does it mean? This Jara has been explained in two ways. As a subjective, with a subjective definition and also as just as an abstract phenomenon. If you go into the page number 9. Wow, I've written wow. Jara, page number 9. Jara, phenomenon of aging. I'll read out, read this paragraph. Jara o aging is a phenomenon of weakening of an arisen conditioned reality. Jara means it becomes, the reality becomes weaker. In what sense when we say weak? Weak in the sense of 
being in unable to exist furthermore it is weakening to continue to exist even momentarily so this phenomenon is explained in two ways with a subjective definition as a phenomenon which weakens the strength of the reality a phenomenon which weakens the reality and with an abstract definition as the phenomenon of weakening of an arisen condition reality i think you find these two differences the two differences are when you read the explanation of the phenomenon of jara sometimes jara has been explained as a phenomenon which weakens within the literature i'm talking within the entire literature canon commentary sub commentary sometimes they have been explained as a phenomenon which weakens the weakens the uh, reality sometimes the weakening itself is called jar right weakening itself is called jar so then i would also want to add some point now when we say jara you see to satipatthana sutta kanditcham paritcham valitta chatha so like jara is sometimes explained as uh, hair is getting gray the skin is uh, how do you call wrinkling so these are also explained these are signs of jara please keep this in mind this is not the actual jara jara is a phenomenon when a flood has gone through a certain area we find the marks with that marks we know a water flood current has passed through this area so likewise when the body is affected by jara certain rupas appear in a different manner so this is a effect of jara this is not jara jara means a certain phenomenon which you cannot observe with your eye jara is not chakku vinaya so what we see as getting old it's a signs of jara these signs are not observable in divine bodies not in brahma bodies not in certain uh, immaterial things but in certain bodies it is it becomes obvious if you take the life of bisaka according to the literature even being such an old lady she looked like a very young woman young girl so it say that because of her past marriage the signs of jara didn't get manifested so it happens different bodies have different different abilities right so these signs which are explained so in some buddhist buddha buddha sometimes teaches gives teachings based on the effect referring to the effect but he refers to the cause sometimes giving that cause but referring to the effect so this is a ways of teaching that these are called religious constraints so for example nitti is a way of explaining these kinds of ways of explaining are another topic in buddhism this is the, this is i'm talking about fundamentals fundamentals is one religious constraints the ways of explaining is different but they both have to be merged in to understand the doctrine very clearly so buddha sometimes in satipatthana sutta if you look into the jara he has given the doctrine explanation based on the signs of jara not the jara so jara there is another point i want to add because i didn't mention it here so if someone asks the question how uh, for example when our body at a certain stage our body starts to grow and it decays and passes away how do we explain this so a person who dies at a very young age of 20s 30s we don't see his body getting aged does still has he gone into jara according to buddhism yes so all the nama and rupa which are called a human being or a animal, living being arise and pass away momentarily each this nama rupa goes into jara in a more in this their momentary existence but what happened in the beginning years of our human life the when the rupas pass away the in the generation new rupas arise the amount of rupas which arise compared to the amount of rupas which pass away are different higher so what happens rupas pass away every moment but the rupas which come into our body are higher so we see a growth in our body but when it gets older the number of rupas which are added are getting lesser 
and those rupas are also in a different appears in a different manner so we find we see the body is getting aged so and therefore every being dies affected by jara so even though we see a growth or a uh, increase of beauty or increase of strength at a certain age still our body is oppressed by this phenomenon of jara so these are extra information so i'll come back to the uh, topic so jara or aging is a phenomenon of weakening or of an arisen condition reality this phenomenon is explained in two ways with a subjective definition as a phenomenon which weakens the strength of a reality and with the abstract definition as the phenomenon of weakening of an unrecent condition reality according to the first definition jara is like a fire which weakens the things that are caught into it some teachers i have given you the reference some teachers have explained jara as a fire because when something is caught into the fire it becomes weakened then according to the abstract definition weakening itself is jara the buddha has mentioned this weakening as a change in the samkata lakkana sutta he was given as a, a weakening phenomenon uh, definition titas anya tattam panyati an alternation is seen in the conditioned reality which persists actually the change that takes place during this phase of titi is not a transformation of an intrinsic nature of a reality into another nature it's not patavi is becoming apo or an increasing or decreasing of the intensity of the reality it doesn't mean that patavi is increasing or decreasing what is this alternation means jara is the decreasing of the strength of the reality to exist so it's a one kind of phenomenon it becomes when undergoing this phenomenon the reality is getting weaker why how do we know it because it cannot sustain these are observable definitions so when you go into buddhism one at the end we comes into the observation because for example i'll give you two uh, this jara also explained by the buddha through his observation i'll give you two examples why some theories or most of the theories in buddhism are based on ob- direct observations of the buddha for example he mentioned i have already mentioned this been a few few more few times he mentioned when regarding the anicca impermanence he mentions if something is produced by impermanent reality how could this become permanent so it seems like a very basic fundamental of the teachings he says if something is made out is impermanent its production how could it be permanent it is impermanent so if we are going to apply this as a very basic fundamental of the theory of impermanence this is not a very good logic why is that because he first creates gives the idea something is impermanent which is the outcome of this impermanent reality is also impermanent so his first definition based on what his first definition was made based on his observation so these were given for an example life take about a think about a life a divine life brahma life people consider this as eternal so these teachings were given aim in the something thought that the brahma life is eternal divine life is forever so he was giving if the divine life is attained because of your prayers if the divine life is attained because of your jhana if the divine life is attained because of your wholesome deed think about this deed this deed, is this deed permanent or impermanent is your prayer permanent or impermanent so we find we pray for a certain time and we stop it we enter into a jhana we come out of it we give a dana and we finish it so if the life if you believe that the life is a production of this karma this karma is surely impermanent you can observe it through observe you don't need teachings for that this is clearly observable because when you give the dana this dana is when you start the dana you finish the dana you do a prayer you finishes it you enter into a jhana you comes out of it when you are out of the jhana jhana is not exists gone already so this impermanent reality cause how can it produce a permanent state permanent life so another point this is through observation another point he mentioned i mentioned in the previous explanation 
previous lecture. A uh, basic fundamental of Buddhist teachings is when we when the cause is not for example because of a cause effect exists when the cause is removed effect will not happen so how to remove the cause normally cause we are talking here for example when we talk about suffering cause is the defilement when you remove the defilement suffering is not going to happen the next life is not going to happen Right? Because as long as the suffering, the defilements remain, suffering is going to happen. If you remove the defilement, suffering will not happen. This is a very easy logic. So then he comes, how to remove these costs, the defilements. So he explains, if you develop wholesome qualities, unwholesomeness will be removed. So how to explain this logically? There is no way to logically explain it. Just to believe or accept this fundamental. So he gave a nice sutta. Akusalang Bikave Pajahata. He says, I listened to this sutta accidentally yesterday. Very nice. So, Akusalang Bikave Pajahata. Give up the Akusala. He mentions, if monks, Akusala cannot be removed, I would never say you to remove Akusala. Since it can be removed, I say you to remove it. Because through his own practical observation, he knew, he understood, when you develop the opposite wholesome qualities, unwholesomeness will be removed. We cannot ex give a different example. We just normally give when the light comes, darkness removes. This is not proving it. This is just a giving a simile. So these theories can be only proven through your direct experience. So when you develop uh, uh, charity, you get rid of attachment. When you develop metta, loving kindness, you get, of, get rid of dosa. This can be really observed through your own experience. So likewise, certain Buddhists, most of the Buddhist basic theories are based on these kinds of practical observation. So, so what I want to say is, jara is the decrease, this is also, jara is the decreasing of the strength of the reality to exist. How do we prove it? Because whatever reality happens will end up one day. That can be observed. So why it ends up? Because it comes into a state that it is unable to exist anymore. That is why it passes away. So we understand there is a phenomenon which is called jara, which governs every, which, is, which affects all the conditioned realities from the moment they arise. So these are the two points, the titi and jara. So titi means the persisting moment of a reality. Jara means the alternation. What is this alternation? It is the weakening of a reality to exist any further. So in the end, eventually, when it comes to culmination, it passes away. Yes, we had a question here. What is the reality of the Jara. First, the uh, definition. First, is Kadu, the second is Kawaii. Yeah. Also, for the Kadu, uh, there is agent. What, what is the reality of the agent? It's not a reality. Jara is not a reality. It's just a phenomenon. No, I mean, uh, for the first definition, the, uh, the phenomenon which weakens yeah. the subject of. The phenomenon is taken as a subject. And, uh, the phenomenon should consist of sensing. No, no, it's just a grammatical terminology, way of saying. It's just a way of saying, expressing. Who weakens? The jara weakens the reality. It's just a way of saying. For example, we have definitions like, chitta knows the object. So if someone asks the question, is chitta and knowing are different or same? It's the, diff it's the same. It's a way of expressing. Easy way of conveying. Conveying the idea. Yes, but the Jara and Jirana Jara and Jirana is asking. I think did you hear the question? Okay. Uh, Bhante is asking what is the relationship between Jara and Jirana Teju? Jirana Teju means there is a certain kind of heat within our body because of which our body starts to get weakened, like our generation of body is affected. So that is why the new rupas which happen at a certain time become uh, appear strange differently. So Jirana Tejo is uh, it's a very good question. I would call Jirana Tejo is a cause uh, for this jara to happen, right? It is I would call it like that. 
But uh, even within that, for example, if you take Jirana Tejo itself as Java. For example, Jirana Tejo is a Tejo Dhatu, it arises and passes away. This, even within this Jirana Tejo, we have this phenomenon. Yes, it has the phenomenon called to burn other things. That's why, yes. Yes. Phenomenon called to burn. So, because of it's affected by it, the rupa gets weakened, we call. So, it has a very good question. It has a very good relationship with the uh, with the jara. But we normally say jara even within the jirana tejo. Jirana tejo arise and pass, you know. Right? So, this jirana tejo also affected by jara. So, jara is a basic phenomenon which governs the entire conditioned reality. It's a phenomenon, sadly. It's not a reality. So, at the end of this uh, course in the chapter, I will be explaining difference of a reality and a phenomenon. Reality and a phenomenon. So, it's a very huge difference there. Because, for example, in I have heard some say, especially these days in Sri Lanka, I have heard some are saying, so we say everything is impermanent. Not everything, it's not, not properly used. Conditioned realities are impermanent. That's how we say it, right? So normally they say everything is the, the thing which is not impermanent is the impermanent things. For example, did you understand this logic? Everything is changing. Which never changes is changing. So this this is this is one kind of a, a argument some some used to bring. This is very it seems like very nice. Everything changes. Yeah, which doesn't change is changing, they would say. So this is not, this is a, if you put it in the Buddhist theory, you can apply this in Buddhist because impermanent, for example, they would say changing is permanent. Oh, this seems very, very it, 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 you feel like this is a paradox. This seems like a paradox. Actually, it's a paradox because one has not understood the difference of a reality, difference of a phenomenon. When Buddha says permanent and impermanent, he was referring to the realities. A reality which arises and passes away is an impermanent. So the nature of arising and passing away is the phenomenon of impermanence. A phenomenon should not be discussed as permanent or impermanent. Phenomenon should be addressed as correct or wrong. A phenomenon is accurate or inaccurate when you express it. Buddha expressed a phenomenon which is accurate, which is correct. That's why he is the Sammasambha. That's why he becomes, his teachings are correct. But it doesn't mean his teachings are permanent. Permanent means a reality which is tangible in terms of intrinsic natures. Yes. Happening. Idea. No, not a concept. It's a happening. Happening and a concept is different. Concept is something you construct with your mind. For example, based on these realities, you consider the idea of a purisa. You cannot find this purisa. But a phenomenon is a functioning of the realities. So this functioning is not a something that you develop conceptually. It is the happening of the thing. Yes. So how can the happening is correct or wrong? Why? For example, okay, this is the happening of so for example, if I hit this board, what will happen? A sound will arise. Even without hitting, how could you say it? Because there is a law of conformity. We know that. Even you may if I if someone argues, no, you hit, a smell will come out. No one would say that. Why? Because you still have not experienced this incident. Because there is a conformity in the law. That is what the Buddha understood. That is why the Buddha could say, without looking into all the realities, how could he say, whatever reality which appears wherever, whatever vijnana appears wherever, in which universe, it is impermanent suffering and non-self. So he understood the phenomenon. So phenomenon is much deeper than the reality. Phenomenon is much profound than the reality. So therefore, that's why Buddha mentioned this Patita Samuppada, which is a phenomenon, is so profound. Without understanding this phenomenon, beings are still trapped in this samsara. So we can understand the phenomenon as object and truth. Yeah, you can say, when you say the world as truth, 
is if you don't misunderstand this with satcha, I would say yes. Satcha is different. When you say truth, satcha refers to the reality. Objective fact or a happening of the world. That's why you use the best word is to use a phenomenon. It's like it's how it functions. Avijja, because of avijja, sankara appears. This is a phenomenon. This is called paticca samupada. Yes. If it is an objective fact, how can you say? Or why you say objective fact? I will call it phenomenon. Yes. As objective facts, how can? Objective facts. What do you mean by that? Please explain. To this phrase is to explain phenomena. Okay, right. Okay. Then, uh, how can it weaken this sensing? No, no, it's like this. It is, the weakening is a phenomenon. That Whatever arises, weakens. That is uh, some kind of phenomenon. That's the second definition, I mean, for the first definition. What do you mean? First definition, you say the phenomenon which weakens. That's why I say, when we have a grammatical explanation, don't go into these deeps. Depths. The real definition is the second definition. First definition was given as a convenience to understanding. Right? It is a just a convenience of understanding. The real definition is the second definition. Right? So, then uh, we go into the, uh, now, Titi and Jara. Jara means this weakening. Titi means the exist, uh, persisting mode. Now, understand the functioning of the phenomenon. Jati, Jara, Marana, please add one word, and Titi. Please add that. It's a big mistake. Jati, the topic, 9.11. Page number nine. Page number nine. The second topic: understanding functioning of the phenomenon jati, jara, marana, and kiti. Understanding the phenomenon. Page number nine. Right. Page number nine. Second topic: understanding the functioning of the phenomena. Phenomena jati, jara, marana, and kiti. Phenomena is plural. So we shall look into this existing phase of a corporate reality in order to understand the phenomena. Phenomena is plural of phenomena, right? So all these three phenomena, the rising, phenomenon of the rising, phenomenon of aging, phenomenon of passing away, and phenomenon of existing. The reality suddenly it was not there happens and it exists and it passes away. Think this as a rupa, utterly. Hardness. It was not there, it happened, it exists and passes away. So what is this arising means? Arising means coming from non-existence into existence. So the teachers, teachers means well erudite Theravadin scholars, and also it makes logic, says that this arising, arising is different from the reality. Please keep this in mind. Sound arises. Sound, which was not there, suddenly happened. This happening is not the sound. Sound is something which is ten, uh, something sensitive to the ear. It can be known in its intrinsic nature. That is the sensitive to the ear, ear lobe. So this happening is something else from the sound. It's not the sound, but it is related to the sound. Without the sound, you cannot talk about the happening of sound. So therefore, happening or arising is different from the sound. Right? So it was not there, it suddenly happens. Now, this happening is a certain kind of... Now we go more abstract into this philosophy. Happening is a certain kind of a force, certain kind of a, uh, it's like a, it's always a plus force, it's a vega we call it. Vega, because it was not there, it suddenly happens. So, because if it not, it was from zero to one, for example, zero to one. When you want, for example, in, you, in our day to day life, when we want to come from zero velocity to one kilometers per hour, this is acceleration always, which was not there, which comes into plus is an acceleration. Always a plus force happening. So therefore, arising is a plus force. If this plus force keeps on happening, what would happen? If this plus force keeps on happening, it would keep on increasing. 
It is the reality is just is they never come into the passing away. But the observation, the practical observation, has clearly shown us whatever reality happens is passing away. So what happens? This plus force from non-existent to existent has to be it becomes retarded with the time. So even though we draw it like this, but when we talking about the force. Force means arising force, ability, and ability, ability of, for example, uh, ability to exist, right? So it started with a certain force, plus force, but as soon as it arises, it is affected by the phenomenon which is called jara. For example, example is when you throw a uh, rock up up to the sky, it is affected by the gravity. So, like the ja gravity, jara is affecting this aris newly arising phenomenon, reality. But it will not be stopped immediately. So, what happens? This is affected by jara. So, instead of having a uh, uh, how to say continuous uh, acceleration, this force is affected. So we come into this kind of a curve. Mathematically, when uh, when there is uh, opposing force coming on, acceleration will decrease. Even the acceleration decreases, velocity increases. Right. So likewise, when it comes to the vectors of speed of the force of arising, force of arising stops. The reality has come into a very good state, state of its strong state, right? It comes to a strong state. So that's why we normally say, yeah, it comes to a strong state. Now, then what happens? It keeps this keep on up from the moment it arises, it's oppressed by jump. So what happens? Now it is affected. Keep on still affected. So this force or ability to exist starts to reduce. So it starts to reduce gradually, and at a certain time, we call it collapse, sudden collapse. Comes in all this. So, this is how we would say a reality which came into existence out of non existent is affected by the jara and falls into non existence. Why this? Diagram was drawn in this manner because there is uh, opposing force which is called jara, which reduces the ability of the reality to exist. So, if you talk about the reality, now you can ask a question: Why did I draw these two diagrams? This diagram shows the reality existed, and from here it disappears. There was no change in the reality throughout this time. No change means. There is no change. For example, reality means a certain intrinsic nature, intrinsic characteristic. Hardness is the reality. The level of the hardness will never change. Hardness will never become cohesion. Hardness, level of hardness will not increase, neither decrease. It will remain as it is. But there is a change happening. So that is why in this diagram, no change has happened. Timeline, this is the arising moment, this is the passing moment, part of the existence as it is and passed away in its intrinsic nature. But there happened a change. What was that alternation Buddha was talking? Alternation in the ability to exist further. So that's why when you come into this diagram of the force or ability to exist in the time, you find a great alternation. That alternation is found. Not, for example, if you take, according to some teachers, for Tamil, according to the tradition, in this moment, I'm not, I'm not, I'm a person that doesn't criticize tradition, because I really, uh, means I'm explaining this tradition. But if you explain how the, uh, if you go into the explanations that are found in the commentaries, we find that. It exists, for example, alternation is, according to them, according to some commentators, alternation is found in the face of Tikti. So they explain, there is a face called Upada, there is a face called Banga, alternation happens during the in-between phase. Alternation happens during the between phase. But according to this, it shows if the arising force is not altered, 
is not stopped. It is not prevented. If it is not prevented, right? If it is not prevented, it's, it's, it, it will keep on happening. So therefore, the alternation starts from the moment it arises, but the upada moment, arising phase, because in Buddhism we call arising, existing, passing, persisting, passing, arising phase, arising moment is the time which takes to stop this arising speed. Acceleration is stopped, for example. So this will be the arising phase. During this phase, the plus force, the acceleration will be stopped. And then it starts to weaken. And then ultimately it falls down. So therefore, titasa and this Buddha says titasa anyatattam panyayati. The titta means from the very moment after its arising till the very moment of its passing away. So the entire field is the field of jara. Jara happens throughout this entire field. So we shall look into this paragraph. If you before that, if you have any questions, yes. No, jara, the, for example, jara is found in the entire period. Right? The entire period. This entire range can be called the entire That's why kittasa anya tattampanya. If you go to the basic sutta, you cannot say this is the titi only. Titi is the entire thing. Yes, titi is the entire yeah. But jara should be after... No, because why this becomes weakens? Why this becomes weaker? Because of jara. Got the point? It's like the arising speed is affected from here. Otherwise, it would have had a different angle. Okay, is it clear? So jara is from the moment of from the moment it is affected by jara. You can say titi and jara. Titi, no, no. Titi, jara is the alternation. Titi is the phase of existing. Right? It's a different thing. Right? During the titi, jara affects the reality. Right? Yes. Alternation means a change. Change. Uh, there's a two meanings of alternation. Alternation sometimes like you give a different different opinion, right? For example, you replace something with some idea, right? That is also alternation. But change also can be another meaning. Change. Sorry for that, right? Yes. Comes means it is affected, yeah. It means that it always uh, um, gave to some. Effect. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, yeah. Always, yes, exactly. So that's why we say every reality is burning in Jara. Every condition. Every condition reality. Sorry, thank you. Condition reality is affected by Jara. So right? can we say that Titi is um, is a procedure? In which uh, Jara affects on the. We can say. We can say. Yeah. Also, yeah. Also, we can say. Yeah. Titi is the. Yeah. Titi is the phrase in which Jara is affected. Yeah. And another question is that yeah. where does it come from the force of the ability to exist in your know, Where does it come from the force of this force? This force of ability. Yeah. Where is the <laughs> When, for example, so this is the condition. Condition reality. So it is made by causes. Because of causes, the effect happens. Right? So we can say, or this now we are coming into a very <laughs> philosophical point. So it means. I'll come next tomorrow. I'll, I'll be explaining a much more uh, easy topic to understand, like basics of uh, causality, right? So, cause and effect are never the same. That is a very basic fundamental. Cause and effect are never the same. 
because of cause effect happens so when the effect happens a reality which happens out of nothing because of causes out of nothing so it has an inbuilt ability inbuilt quality to exist it has an inbuilt quality to exist that is why when when we say a reality suddenly pops up out of nothing pops up out of nothing it it is its ability to exist also inbuilt in them that is why it came into its power so when we talk about chitta when we talk about rupa that tangible quality itself has this that is why it comes into existence it it, it it is inbuilt thing that its ability to live ability to exist is inbuilt in there no 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 because uh, i think uh, this ability is something inbuilt in every reality that is how i understand Yeah. Causes also has the nature of existence. Yeah. But existing itself is not a cause. Yes. The, the causes are sati. Yes. According to Atma. Yeah. Sati. So those sati can make something arise. Yes. So many questions are based on this arising. Existing means if they understand exist, arise. The existing ones are included in that point. So. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. 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 From the, for example, when we say cause and effect, cause effect is not a transformation of the cause. It's effect is something which happens re- newly because of a cause. So, what is the ability of the cause to produce the effect? We call it pachya sakti. There is an ability of the cause to produce the effect. That ability is a quality of the cause. It is not something other than the cause. Something which is in the quality, in, in within the cause. So, because of this ability, effect suddenly happens. So, when I ask the question that where is the ability to exist, that ability, if something is an intrinsic nature, every intrinsic nature has this ability to exist. It doesn't come from anywhere. So, when they when they learn the word out of nothing, they misunderstand out of both. No, it's out of nothing means like cause is there because of cause the effect happens. So when I say out of nothing means the effect did not exist before. That's what I mean, right? Because the cause is there, effect suddenly happens. So we have to say it's because of the effect, cause the effect happens. I think your question was where the ability to exist comes from, right? Uh, yeah, if you say that if, if there is come from anywhere. No, no, it can't, yeah, it, it, it doesn't come from anywhere means, if a, for example, if I, if someone asks the question, why, for example, we say conditioned realities are because of causes. So if someone asks a question, why there is a nature called chitta? Why there is such a quality of cognition other than different quality? So these are unexplainable things. We observe what it exists. Chitta is because of a certain cause, but why this characteristic of chitta? That is a, one kind of a basic fundamental which is unexplainable. So, likewise, when we say certain intrinsic natures, qualities, if something can be felt, something can be known, something exists in its nature. I would so uh, this is my idea I would call this intrinsic nature has the ability to exist that is why it can be felt that is why it is existing so when we call about the existing quality it means it has the ability to exist 
but when it is existing the thing is it is that ability is always reduced it is a phenomenon why chitta happens why when we touch here instead of a smell sound happens it's a phenomenon so it's a one kind of a law which governs some would call it's a god but we would call is a law so based on this law what happens when two condi- one certain condition comes an uh, effect happens that effect the characteristics of that effect in buddhism is defined exclusively so that's uh, how i do explain we will we discuss on this matter right later so now i'll come into the page number 9 uh, para- uh, topic number 2 understanding function of phenomena jati jara and marana we shall look into this existing phase of a corporeality in order to understand the phenomena arising is sort of a speed upada vega and it starts with a growth like an acceleration of the velocity the reason is arising is the appearing of a rupa that did not exist it means coming into existence from non existence according to the natural law the growth seen in arising speed will not keep on increasing nor it will remain stable it is held back moreover the arising speed speed will itself will decline this declining of the upad vega is due to being affected by the phenomenon called jara it starts from immediately after the beginning moment of upada after the arising speed has been stopped the existing rupa is further oppressed by aging so this arising speed stops here so after it has been stopped it keep on affected by jara and uh, the existing strength of the rupa declines when the corporeity becomes too weak to persist any longer it comes to the phase of passing away and eventually vanishes marana this explanation shows that a reality is constantly oppressed by the phenomenon called jara from the moment it arises in the beginning due to jara the, uh, the beginning what is the effect of jara in the beginning because of jara arising speed is held back after after the reality is constantly oppressed so its ability to or strength to persist is deteriorated uh, finally unable to stand in the state of existing is vanishes hence the phenomenon of jara affects conditioned realities immediately after they have arisen and the culmination of this deteriorating is the banga of breaking down so that is how i would explain this yes yeah so you go the second part reference to the first part yeah so when the banga happen yeah so is there any force left so what i meant was like after banga there should be any should be any yeah so that means there is a force and after that Can you suddenly disappear? So it's going to zero. It should disappear. Yeah. Right. Yes. So that's why I was like expecting the second chart reference to the first. Yeah, like this one. Yes. Something like this. Ah, okay. Right. Yes. Better to draw it like this. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Suddenly disappear. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that. It should be suddenly disappear. thank you for that right so then uh, now we shall look into the popular statement uttered by the buddha in the sankata lakkana sutta regarding the characteristics of conditioned realities tini mani vikave sankata asta sankata lakkana upado panyaiti vayo panyaiti titasa anya kartam panyaiti imani ko vikave tini sankata sankata lakkana sankata asta sankata lakkana because there are three can these three characteristics that define the condition what three an arising is seen a vanishing is seen and its alteration why it persists why it persists is seen these three are the three characters these are the three characteristics that define the condition the buddha has mentioned of these three characteristics of condition reality upada vaya and tikasa anitta when the terms are being interpreted against the terminologies inter- introduced above because i gave you many upada and many niroda right so based on that according to the sutta upada refers to the udaya avatta upada the happening why refers to the banga avatta niroda passing away the mofa pita refers to the persisting stage of the reality that means phase immediately after the arising and till the final moment of the phase of vanishing 
Another tariff is the phenomenon of jara, which is defined with an abstract definition. In terms of atita and natita, I discussed this last week. As the sutta talks about conditioned, re- conditioned ultimate realities, aviparita bhava atita is referred to. Aviparita bhava atita means quality, intrinsic nature that can be known. Paramat, not a panyati. Before arising of a reality, if someone refers to that reality, it's the non-existing nature. This its non-existing nature is called anagata natita because before that it doesn't exist. After the vanishing of a reality, if someone refers to that reality, its non-existing nature is called atita natita. During the existing phase, it means while the real, a reality is in any of these three phases, upada titi ovaya, it is in the state of avatta bhuta atita. Moreover, the existing nature of a conditioned reality is also called dhammata, dham, uh, dharmana upada. So these are the points. I know it's a, a, a bit uh, complicated kind of a topic, but the things I wanted to emphasize was that in the two lectures, if we are really connected. Upada, nati, upada, niroda, ati, nati have various meanings, but they are really related to our condition, uh, conditionality. And to, in this lecture, I discuss about the titi. There are two types of titi: kana titi and pabanda titi, uh, existing of a generation, and then about the jara, which is a phenomenon, and how it affects uh, reality in its momentary existence and the field of the jara, in which time it is affected and how uh, because of uh, because of jara, reality, uh, reality, uh, recent reality uh, decays and passes away and also application of the terminologies we studied last week into the Sankata Lakkana Sutta. So tomorrow I will be discussing, uh, the chapter is going to get uh, more easier, otherwise you will think that this is a very high philosophical type of uh, discussion. Now the chapter will come into very fundamental points from the tomorrow. I will be explaining some basic fundamentals which are easy to understand but very, which are very important in terms of Theravada doctrine. Like the correct, uh, what is a cause, what is an effect, what are the main characteristics of a cause, what are the main characteristics of effects, what is the main pillars of this causality and how it affects to our lives, especially to our practice and so forth. So I will be uh, extending this lecture uh, uh, topic tomorrow even. So if you have any questions before we conclude, you can ask. Yes, two questions. Sorry, Gandamba? Gandhabo oh, Pachupatito means uh, uh, a being is uh, being first arises, right? Do you mean what is the relationship? Is it? So Gandhapa, according to the Theravada tradition, now if you go into uh, different traditions, Gandhapa is explained differently. Gandhapa means sometimes a person being who after death for seven days, uh, Gandhapa remains till he finds a, 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 a certain place. In a one, one doctrine like, like the Abhyagirians, they held the idea Gandhapas are found from when you are born, a human dies and is born as a human again. If you are born as a Deva, Gandhabha is not necessary because the thing is, the, uh, uh, another point, just I want to explain about Gandhabhas for a while. So there are way, different ways of explaining Gandhabhas. So another, one way of Abhagirians have the argument, it's a very logical argument. They were saying, if a human dies and was born as a human, how can, because the birth happens according to Kama, right? So according to the Kama that I'm going to be born, a suitable mother has to be ready, right? So this is not very logical, they would say. So uh, the Mahaviharians have argued, this uh, st- uh, story I have read from uh, Venerable Ananda Mithya. He, uh, he has given this explanation. He says, Mahaviharians would say, if you throw a rock into the mount- uh, sky, it will fall in somewhere on the earth. So somehow, when you die, you will be born in a, there will be a somewhere in the world that you, which is suitable for you to be born, right? But the Abhagini has the idea, it is not very logical. So when you die, your Kamaja Rupas and 
Uttuja uh, Chitta Jarupas will come out from your body and you will be having a similar figure. I'm telling what the, Abhi, the it is said, right? So Abhi, uh, you will we will have a similar figure with the Kamma Jarupas, Chitta Jarupas, and some Uttuja Rupas which are subtle. So what happens? Till you get a proper place to arise, be born, he will be traveling. So they would say, still it is anatta, because these rupas arise and pass away. So still you get a proper place. Then, actually the person is not fully dead, according to them. Then, when he gets a suitable place, he will die and born in a certain place. This is the one type of a Gandha. Another type of a Gandhapa is that whatever state you are be born, after you die, normally you stay in for seven weeks, seven days. For example, if you go to the Tibetan explanation, that they have a book of death that they utter after your death. So this book was book is recited for as a guidance to the person who dies. So when you recite this book, it says for the deceased person. You will find these, these things. Don't get trapped into these sensual pleasures. There will be temptations. So, and also, if I go into further explanations, he will go and observe the even the sexual act sometimes the parents are having. Then he will choose which parent that he would come in. There's another type of Ganga. So, according to the Theravadians, Gandhapa Theravadians is explaining to it. One Gandhapa is one who, according now I come to the Theravada doctrine. The Gandhapas are the ones who live by uh, inhaling the smell. It's called Gandhapa. Pa is to drink. So, when you in, in, even in, uh, how to say, in the Burmese tradition, Drinking, Tao Day. So even for drink, uh, smoking, they call Tao, right? So likewise, uh, Le, Le Tao, right? Uh, right? So uh, so then uh, uh, they say, how to say, Gandhapa means the one who lives by in inhaling certain smells, Gandhapa. And there's a, uh, how to say, another type of a Gandhapa, which is comes from the Gandharva. It is the musician of the deities. Gandhapa, the Panchasiko Gandhapu. It is the musician of the Sakka, another term for Gandhapa. Another Gandhapa is Gantabodhi Gandhapu. It's a very strange, uh, we could call it's a, it's a, uh, philologically a little bit strange. Gantabodhi Gandhapu, the one who should go to a certain destination, is called Gandhapa. So this is the being who is born in the mother's womb. So that is what Bhante is asking. How this Gandhabha is referred with the Kama Samangita. So why did I say this when he asked the question Gandhabha? Because Gandhabha in the Tibetan tradition, Gandhabha in the Abhagiri tradition, Gandhabha in the Mahavihara tradition are different. They are different explanations. So according to the Mahaviharians, when he, the question asked, Buddha mentions Gandhambo Pachu Patito Hoti. It means in the mother's womb, a new Nama Rupa has arisen. Nama Rupa has arisen in the mother's womb. That is how the traditionally explains. Buddha's teachings, Mahaviharians explain this way. Another tradition would explain this. This is a very controversial point. So according to Mahaviharians, the Chuti Chitta passes away in a certain place, immediately a Patisanti Chitta may happen. So sometimes a human is born as a certain divine being. For example, we have experiences like certain humans died, left traveling for a while as a, as a certain spirit and born again as a human. So according to the Theravadians, there is a Patisanti and Chuti in this in this spiritual, uh, of this spirit even. It's a different life. So, when he is born again as a human in the mother's womb, Gandhapo Pachupatito means the Patisandhi Chitta and Kamajarupas which happened on that moon. So then, five aggregates have appeared. These five aggregates are conceptually called as a Gandhapa. So when the Bhante asked the question, what is the relation of Kamma Samangita and Gandhapa? Why the Gandhapa happens to Patisandhi Chitta, Chetasikas and Kamma Jarupa? So these are results of a Kamma. Kamma which came found in the previous life, at the moment of previous life death. So these are born. So this Kamma, uh, if you ask this Kamma which gave the Patisandhi, which gave the Patisandhi, at that moment, this Kamma, before we die, this Kamma, for example, if you talk this Kamma, 
this karma comes in front. At that moment, this, this karma will give Patisandhi, this karma will give Bhavanga, Chuti, Tilda Chuti. That karma, before coming in front, remain as a karma samangita. While it was done, Chetana samangita, while we did the karma. Chetana samangita, while we do the karma. Remains as a karma samangita as a force. When it comes in front, so karma samangita, S. Yes. Then karma, while we do the karma. Karma samangita, now this one is called upadhana samangita. Upadhana samangita. So this, uh, even before it gives the patisandhi, when the kamma is presenting kamma nimitta, kamma and gati nimitta, that time we say kamma samangita has come, the later kamma samangita is more effective. We will like discuss this point when we come to the kamma chapter. So it's more effect, it's coming in front, it's getting activated, more activated. So then even before the patisandhi chitta appears, we say the kamma is activated. Now he is destined to be born here. Sometimes this can be interrupted by another karma. Right? So then this keeps on continuing till the death. At that time we say it is the Upatthana Samangita. Not the Kamma Samangita. We don't call it Upatthana Samangita. Sam when at that time it is Upatthana Samangita. It has come in front. All the Chitta Chetasikas which arise at that moment, Kamma Chitta Chetasikas, we call it Vipaka Samangita. Yes. Is it, is it the. Question you wanted? Right. Okay. Yes, we can have one question. You have? Yes? Science of Jara? No. Science of Jara means, which I mentioned, science of Jara is, it is found in generation of now. Momentarily, you cannot find any sign. Right? So what we see as wrinkling and widening of hair, wrinkling of skin, is happens because of this generation of rupa. Right? It's like the new rupas passes, uh, certain rupas pass away, old rupas, new rupas arise. In the beginning, the number of new rupas which arise are higher than the rupas which pass away. So we see a growth in our body. So because of the jirana tejo affecting the body continuously, what happens afterwards, all the moment is passing away. But at a certain time, certain age, the new rupas which appear will reduce, decrease. So then we are getting thinner, weaker, our body is getting smaller. So then we come, we call it getting older. So the new rupas which arise because of affected by Jirana Tejo, this one is, is because of that new rupas appear in a very unattractive manner. It's like they get, uh, the hair gets uh, whiter, the skin gets wrinkled, and eyes are having uh, different, uh, reducing the ability, so forth. So the jara signs, so these are the signs of jara. So signs of jara are seen in a generation of rupas. Right? Not after the bhanga. Should not say like that. Not in the moment of the jara. Okay. So then, uh, I think, yeah, we'll meet tomorrow for this. Thank <laughs> you.